just when we think the NBA trade deadline is going to be boring and it's not going to mean much. And I had planned on creating this video of just some potential trades I was seeing on the horizon that might happen that I would like to see happen. Wasn't going to be anything groundbreaking, to be honest with you. The NBA script writers come through with the biggest audible of the season and Kyrie Irving just requested a trade request. I'm recording this on Saturday, February 4th. But on Friday, February 3rd, Kyrie Irving requested a trade as, and the Lakers, Suns, and Mavericks emerge as potential suitors via sources. This is from Shams in the Athletic. So Kyrie has requested a trade just days, literally like a, less than a week before the trade deadline. The trade deadline is next Thursday, February 9th at 3 p.m. They have literally less than a week to try to move one of the best point guards in the NBA who also is an unrestricted free agent this summer. So if for some reason, he doesn't like the team he gets traded to. He can go wherever he wants. It's a really sticky situation. And we'll get into the weeds of this in a little bit, but I want to give a backstory first. The reason he asked for a trade is the Nets recently offered Kyrie Irving an extension with guarantee stipulations. Meaning if you don't know, most, if not almost all NBA contracts are fully guaranteed, unlike the NFL. Meaning when you sign that contract, the money that they say they're going to give you, they're going to give you no matter what. There's no stipulations. There's no, you have to play a certain amount of games. You have to make an all-star team just the money that's on the dotted line is what you're going to get however every now and then there are some situations that and this was one of the ones that the nets wanted to give him extension with stip guarantee stipulations and i'm assuming the main piece of it was probably just the amount of games played because we'll get into this in a second but Kyrie has missed a lot of games during his time with the nets over the past couple of years league sources with direct knowledge of negotiations who have been granted anonymity so that they could speak freely say that the extension offer was not received well and there have been significant differences that have emerged between the nets and irving the lakers the suns and the mavericks have emerged as potential suitors for irving via per league sources so essentially like i said the nets were like hey we want to put some stipulations in this contract we want to get you an extension we want you to be here but the track record is a little iffy let's put some stipulations on this Kyrie's like no i'm one of the honestly top five point guards in the league is that crazy to say i feel like it's not off the top of my head i'm one of the top five point guards in the league I should not have any sort of stipulations on a contract. I want the most money as possible. I want the security for my family. But honestly, completely understand both sides. Let's talk about the net side of things first and why I understand why they wanted to put some stipulations in it. I don't know if I agree with them doing that, but I understand why they did. We look at Kyrie's time with the Nets these past four seasons, including this year. He hasn't played a full season once. His first season there, the 1920 season, he played 20 out of 64 games. He was dealing with some soldier injuries. He missed a big chunk of time to start the season, and then he was back, and then the shoulder started acting up again, and he missed some sideline for the rest of the year. The 20 to 21 season was a lot better compared to the previous year. He had a couple of games he missed here and there, had a couple of stretches where he had some injuries over the beginning of the season. But still, all in all, he only played 54 out of 72 games. That's almost 20 games missed. Then we get into where it gets a little crazy. Last season, the 21-22 season, where he didn't want to take the vaccine. The team said, well, if you don't take the vaccine, you can't even play road games with us. It was a whole ordeal. We're not going to get into the opinions on whether or not you should or should not take the vaccine. However, he only played 29 out of 82 potential games. And then we get to this season. He's been healthy throughout most of the season. He had a little stint during the beginning of the year where he missed a couple of games, but he's played 40 out of 51 games. For the most part, he's been healthy. Also, I just realized I said he was injured at the start of this season. It wasn't an injury. It was the stuff with the, I'll say the anti-Semitism stuff he had going on when he got suspended for eight games. It, it's been a lot with Kyrie over these last four years on the Nets. I forget some of it it's been a lot so after some quick math if you tally everything up over the last four seasons once again including this year so far Kyrie Irving has played in 143 games out of 253 possible games he's played in 56 percent of the games available since he's been a Brooklyn net and before you start typing in the comments for all the different various reasons some of his injury some of his personal choice I get I get all the context but if you're the Nets and you're looking at it like we're going to make a four or five year, 200 plus almost million dollar investment into somebody that's only played in about 50 percent of the games these past four years. I'm making some stipulations myself. I think anybody, if you really think about it, if you're just making a business deal, because we always say, oh, the NBA is a business. The NBA is a business. We always got to forget the NBA is a business. 
well this is the nba is a business type move from the net you only been a fifth you've been a part-time player a 50 percent employee for the whole time we've had you we would invested all this money in you you want more money nah you only gonna get 50 percent guaranteed because i need to know you're gonna play the other 50 percent. so i get it from the net side of things now let's talk about Kyrie. I get why he's like, yo, y'all don't want to guarantee me. I'm out because if we're being real with ourselves, we said it to be already. Kyrie's a top five point guard in the league. We always have these conversations, how talented, how skilled, how great of a player Kyrie is. His efficiency is unmatched in terms of the shots he's able to put up, the difficulty of shots he's able to make. I'm not disrespecting Kyrie at all. His game is elite. He's one of my favorite players to watch. And if you ask me to the right team, he probably is worth the money. If he's on the court, he is worth every penny you're going to pay him. I saw a couple of people having an argument of, well, why is Kyrie doing this now, six days before the deadline? What is this even going to accomplish? Honestly, if anything, he's giving the Nets a good heads up, like almost doing them a favor. He's making it clear that he doesn't want the type of contract they want to give him. He's like, all right, well, either I walk in the offseason or y'all trade me. Get something back for me or just let me go because clearly we're not on the same page here and it's unfortunate that this is happening because it feels like the nets were finally starting to put things together before KD went out with injury at one point they were the second seed in the eastern conference they were finally starting to look good with KD and Kyrie on the court together KD goes down and as of right now they lost six of the last 10 games but they're still fourth in the eastern conference but all that being said trade deadline is thursday february 9th the nets have five days to find a trade for Kyrie Irving right now depending on what type of package you get back for Kyrie Irving I have you calling around teams like the Mavericks, the Lakers, the Miami Heat. I've heard about the Phoenix Suns. The looming question here is, well, what do you do with Kevin Durant? Because depending on whatever type of trade package you get back for Kyrie Irving, you might be able to continue to keep rolling with Kevin Durant and might still be title contenders, depending on what you get back. Or they make a move and get a bunch of draft capital back. And then now it's like, well, I guess we got to trade Kevin Durant too. Is he back on the trading block? Because if I'm KD at home, I'm like, yo, I'm injured. We was nice. We was doing good. And now this, like, I'm going to come back to potentially a completely different team if Kyrie's not there. That changes the, the dynamic and expectations of this team drastically if Kyrie Irving's not on it. And you get back, like, if it's the Lakers trade, you get back Russ, Austin Reeves, and two picks. That's not winning the chip. Let's keep it a bean. So it almost it's almost like the Nets are in this impossible situation of we got to find two trade packages, one for Kevin Durant and for Kyrie in five days. I'm very curious to see what this is going to look like over the basically the next week. I'll be honest, no mock trade that I've seen online feels like a trade that would keep the Nets as real contenders. I've heard conversations of, OK, we'll swap uh, CP3 and maybe a couple other guys for Kyrie Irving and that could help the Nets continue but I mean CP3 is not the CP3 of old he's not bad by any means but he's not Kyrie Irving the heat deal doesn't really make sense to me because the guys they would move would be like Gabe Vincent Struess uh Tyler Hero who has what's called a poison pill which means the Nets would end up actually paying him more than he currently has it's hilarious because the Mavs were moving quick right after the news came out shout out to PVD plug for grabbing this screenshot but right as Woj tweeted that the Mavericks have previous interest in Kyrie Irving or expected to explore the idea with the Nets ahead of Thursday's deadline. Like most teams, the Mavericks have had a reluctance to make significant offers or assets for Irving. But then you see that Spencer Dinwiddie is questionable for Saturday. Christian Wood is questionable for Saturday. And Davis Bertans is questionable for Saturday. They've been playing just fine for the last couple of weeks before this came out. That's all I'm going to say. As crazy as it sounds, the Nets do decide to go ahead and just blow it all up all together. That Lakers deal doesn't seem impossible to me and it's crazy to say and it feels like that would be some serious NBA scriptwriter work in action but getting two very far draft picks from a Lakers team that honestly could be trash in 2027 and 2029 we really don't know uh being able to get a guy on an expiring contract so you can then start your rebuild process you trade KD for a bunch of draft capital as well it really depends what the Nets want to do. They try to retool and make some minor moves to continue to have a good team around Kevin Durant. Or do you say, well, I mean, this is clearly not going to work. We This bag was fumbled something crazy. At one point, we thought we built the new Warriors with KD, Harden, and Kyrie. And then three years later, we we're about to have none of them. It's absolutely insane. But it's also why I love the NBA, because anything can happen.
This video was absolutely all over the place. I plan on doing a more in-depth trade breakdown that comes out probably early next week, like Monday or Tuesday. And in there we'll have some, if he's not traded already by then, but in there we'll have some actual trade ideas. I just wanted to get my thoughts together, my initial thoughts together for Kyrie basically blowing up the trade deadline and demanding a trade. Where do you want to see Kyrie? Where do you think he would go? And if you just have any other trades in general, because like I said, I'm just gathering notes for trades, drop them below in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. I'm out. Peace.